Welcome back to section two of the DAX Power Pivot and Data Analysis course. We're starting with Group Work 2, which is on page 17 of the User Guide. And I'm just going to go through the objectives so that we're all clear about what's coming up and what we're going to learn. So in this section, we're having a look at adding pivot tables into an Excel sheet directly from the Data Model window. We'll have a look at building relationships between the tables of data that we have in our data model so that we can access information across those tables. And we'll also have a look at tidying up the data by hiding certain data elements such as columns of data from displaying in the pivot table field list and also to the end user. Let's make it especially easy for the end user. So let's crack on guys and start creating some pivot tables. Okay chaps, well on page 17 of the user guide, for those of you that are following along, we're on group work two and we're going to have a look at creating pivot tables and take a look at relationships between those tables. So we're going to add a pivot table directly from the data model window. So I'm currently in the sales report. I'm just going to click on to power pivot and click on the manage button to open up the data model window. So I'm just going to double click on the title bar to expand the window. I'm on the home tab and you can see there's a pivot table drop down. Now it doesn't matter which table you're on. I'm currently on the customers table, but it really doesn't matter which particular sheet I'm on, as long as I'm on the Home tab, and I'm just going to click directly on the, the pivot table icon. Just to let you have a look, if I click on the drop down, I've got various options here, but just to insert a regular pivot table, I'm gonna click directly on the icon. So it switches me over to the sales report window in Excel, and it's asking me here, do you want to create the pivot table on a new worksheet or in the existing worksheet? If I wanted it on the existing sheet, I'm currently on GW3, I could just select existing worksheet and then click on the collapse button here and choose which field I wanted to, to insert the pivot table into. Just going to cancel that because we want to put it on a brand new worksheet, so I'm just going to click on OK. So it's put it on sheet one for me in cell B3. First thing I'm going to do is double click and rename the sheet GW2 for Group Work 2 and enter. So over here on the right hand side is the pivot table field list and if you use the vertical scroll bar you can see that each of the tables in our data model is listed which is fantastic. So if I click on the little expand button beside each of the tables we can see all of the columns, all of the fields within those tables. Now, if you're not currently seeing that list, it could be that your pivot table field list has opened in active mode and it will just look blank because there's currently nothing active. But if you click on the all option, then we can see all of our tables. You'll also see there's a faint line underneath each of the tables. And that's just telling us that there's currently no relationships. There's nothing holding those or binding those or relating those tables together. So we want to create our first pivot table. So I'm going to drag the following fields into the drop zones. So from the customers table, I'm just going to expand the customers table and I'm going to look for occupation. And I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag that down to the rows area. The next thing I'm going to do is click on the products table and I'm looking for the category and I'm going to click and drag that into columns. And then finally, for the values area, from the sales, I'm just going to expand sales and I'm looking for sales amount and I'm going to click and drag that into the values area. Now straight away you're going to notice that there's something clearly very, very wrong. All our values are the same. And on the pivot table field list, it's giving us an error message here telling us that the relationships between tables may be needed. We can select auto detect and that will allow Excel to try to detect the relationship between the tables so that it rectifies this as clearly a problem at the moment. Or we can click and we can create the relationships necessary to display our information correctly in the pivot table. 
Now we're going to come back to this area a little bit later on. This is a manual way of creating those relationships and I don't want to do it this way just yet so I'm going to cancel out of that. So what we're going to do to create the necessary relationships so that the information displays correctly is head on back to our pivot table field list. Now I'm currently on the home tab Sorry, I'm getting a bit excited because this is just so fantastic what's coming up. And over here on the view group, we've got an option for diagram view. Now remember guys, at the moment we have customers, products, sales and territories tables. And if we click on diagram view, we'll see a representation of our tables. So I can click and drag to resize the table so that we can see clearly all of our fields within. And in order to correct the errors in the pivot table, relationships between the tables have to be established in order to share the data between them. Now, if I just click and drag the sales table at the bottom here, and I'm going to drag customers over and territories just there. Now, the reason I've done that is because products, customers and territories all have something in common with the sales table each of them have a relationship with the sales table. The sales table has many records relating to the products table. For example, many of the products in the products table will be listed in the sales table because many times the products have been sold. Similarly, for customers, all of our customers listed will have bought at some time a product and they will be in the sales table through their customer key. Territories will also show up in our sales table because the territories around the world will have had sales at some point. Now there'll be many products repeated in the sales table. Many customers may be repeated in the sales table because our customers would have come back maybe again and again. Well, that's what we're hoping. And territories will be repeated many times in the sales table. What I'm describing is a one-to-many relationship. The one side are our products, customers and territories and the many side is the sales table. There's only ever one instance of any product in the product table. They're all unique values. There's only ever one instance of a customer's record. All the customers are unique in the customers table and there's only one territory in the world they are not repeated so just to reiterate the one side is the lookup table and this table contains unique values the many side of the relationship contains potentially multiple values from the one side. Therefore, there is likely to be duplicate values in the many side, for example, in the sales table, and it may contain multiple occurrences of the same value, for example, products from the product table on the one side. In order to create relationships from the one side, I'm going to click on the product key because that is duplicated in the sales table. So I click on it, I keep the left mouse button down and I drag down to the sales table and just drop over the product key. Can you see the line here? This is the connection established, the relationship between our products table and our sales. We can also see a one here indicating that the product table is on the one side and the asterisk here indicating that the sales table is the many side. If I just click and drag that, it doesn't break the connection. Okay. Now to establish a connection between customers and sales, I can clearly see there's a customer key here and a customer key there. The keys that relate the two tables don't have to be identical. For example, in the sales table, if that just said customer K and customers was customer key, that would be fine to relate those tables together. They don't have to be identical. I'm going to click on the customer key in the customers table on the one side and just drag down to connect the two tables together. And again, if I just move these around, they're joined together. And again, the one is beside the one, the one side 
and the asterisk pointing to the many side. Now, if I double click on one of those relationship lines or connectors, it will tell us a little bit more about each of the tables. So table one is the sales table. This is our many side and it lists all of the fields. And table two is our lookup table, the unique values, and it's telling us here the highlighted fields indicate what's relating the two tables together. And again, it's given as an indication that this is the one side and this is the many. I'll just cancel out of that. Now, it's highlighted at the moment if I just click on it. If I wanted to delete the relationship, as long as it's highlighted, I could just click on the delete key and delete from the model. Now it doesn't delete the tables by click delete, it just deletes the relationship. Okay, so if you've made a mistake, it doesn't matter. You just click and you click on the delete key. I'm gonna cancel out of that because I want to maintain the relationship. But what I'm going to do is click and drag from customer key from the one side down to the many side to connect those two tables together. Just as a point of interest, when we were importing tables of data in the import wizard, we had an opportunity to rename a table with a friendly name. Now, if you've forgotten to do that, you just double click up here. Let's just say, for instance, that when I was importing this table, I forgot to give it a friendly name and it's come in as dim customers. Just double click in here in diagram view and you can update the names of the tables directly here. Absolutely brilliant. Don't you just love Excel? So what we're going to do is go back to our pivot table and boy, doesn't that look brilliant? Our calculations are looking a lot healthier and gone is the error message about relationships in the pivot table field list. And if you notice the faint lines between the tables have disappeared because there is now relationships between those tables. You'll see that territories is still out on a limb because we haven't created a relationship. So next up guys, we're going to have a look at hiding tables and or fields from the pivot table field list. And I'll see you in the next video lecture.